Hello folks, uh, I'm in the process of creating a playlist which deals with solving elementary structural analysis problems using the, uh, the finite elements solver within the CADIA, within the 3D experience platform. Now, uh, before I do any more or less meaningful uh, examples, uh, I, I noticed that there are some issues that have to be handled uh, within the 3D experiences uh, uh, FEA solver uh, before we can actually solve problems in, in problems with it. And uh, I already prepared tutorials one and two, which points to some of those uh, two problems that I've uh, run across. But this is the third one that I'm going to be doing. It's still dealing with certain issues, uh, which uh, has to do with the joint operation in the uh, uh, the uh, platform okay now when i say the platform it means that because the the default CAD software within the 3d experience platform is actually catia so i'm referring to catia v5 which is really v6 okay and that has to do with join so if you have a, a structure to be modeled with beam elements and that structure is entirely done in Sketch. In other words, we're talking about the two-dimensional, essentially two-dimensional uh, uh, frame or two-dimensional dress, etc. Uh, one of the things that you have to do after you create a geometry in the sketch, you have to join it. Because if you don't join it, you will notice that later on, uh, when you try to simulate the result, although things may look okay, when you try to simulate it, it's gonna come, come back with a, a, an error message uh, and says, I can't do it, okay? And I'll do an example, I'll show you an example on how this is gonna come about. The other one is, uh, even if your structure is not in a sketch, even if it's done entirely in wireframe, in other words, as three-dimensional curves, uh, lines, maybe arcs, etc., in space, uh, you still have to join, however, join these things. However, joining alone will not be good enough because uh, you, you'll notice that if you just join, in spite of the fact that you may apply your load and you know the strain to points that you think they're going to work. Uh, when you run it, it's going to come back and say uh, it's on the wrong support. Okay, so you have to do a little bit more than uh, what uh, this is. It both of these have caveats, and as I do my examples, I'll show you what the caveats are. So the problem that I'm going to do for you is uh, uh, this particular. Uh, geometry. This is a two-dimensional uh, frame structure. And uh, first, I'm going to solve it for you when the load is actually not here. The load is at that corner point. Okay? And then I'm going to come and try to put the load somewhere on this piece. Okay? And uh, the caveat is that if the load is applied to that point and you join these things, it's going to run. But if you apply the load somewhere in the middle, in spite of the fact that you may have done a line and a line and a line, so there is a feature here that you can put the load on, that's going to run into a problem. Okay? Uh, and I want to remind you how to display uh, different things uh, in uh, when you use beam elements. So this, this I've shown you in several uh, videos before, but... Uh, Anyway, let's go ahead. First, the first thing we're going to do, we create that geometry, but we're going to do it in a sketch. Okay, so let's go ahead here and uh, start with the, because I will be joining later on, I might as well do it in the generative shape design, because if you ever have to join stuff, you have to go there anyway. So that being the case, I can create my model here. So, and if I do it in part design, at some point when I need to join, I have to go back to the generative shape design. That being the case, let me do it in generative shape design to create that 2D structure. Okay, first thing. So on that vertical plane, I will sketch that geometry that I have. In other words, uh, something like that. Uh, let
Spherical dimensions in a minute. So let's do some dimensions here. So these were 10 inches. This is 10. Okay. And then this is also 10. All right. Now notice that uh, initially I will put the point up there. Okay. And uh, yeah, okay, fine. That, that's fine. We just leave it the way it is. And this angle is 45 degrees. So uh, dimension between uh, this and that, 45 degrees. It just really don't matter that much. It has nothing to do with what I'm trying to show you. But anyway, we stick to that. Okay, so let's go ahead there. So we created our geometry like that. Okay, because I'm going to put the point here, let's not worry about the fact that this, uh, the load up here, you see that it's going to work, but uh, then I'm going to repeat it when you when I put the load down there. Okay. So uh, let's apply material here, tools, material. Actually, let me go ahead and create one. Create the material, and I'm going to call this thing. Uh, this is uh, steel. Steel for uh, join issue. All right, and uh, we say okay. It will be created. Okay, so uh, we go here, double click. Uh, it's a very straightforward problem structure, abacus multi physics, mechanical elasticity, elastic 29,000 KSI, or so 29,000, 1, 2, 3, 29,000 KSI. For some ratio, I don't need it, but I'll make it 0.3. All right. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're done here. So we're going to go to uh, structural model creation. Okay. MTFEM model. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, create our mo uh, mesh. So mesh. Uh, here is the beam mesher. Notice that I have not joined here. Okay. Select that. I have not joined this thing yet. So we say uh, one inch. Okay, fine. It is, there is a mesh here, one inch. So there are 10 there, 10 elements there. And now we're going to assume that the cross section is circle. So we go to uh, properties. Uh, let's make a profile, circular profile. Let's make, give it a radius point uh, uh, one. Can't remember what, uh, what I had here. 0.5 actually. Let's make 0.5. It really doesn't matter. Good. Uh, now we're going to create the beam section. Beam section. Uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, sketch is uh, what I'm going to be joining. You see? I can't even pick this. You see that? I can't even pick this. Okay. You say, okay, no problem. So let's go and do the following. Notice that I could not even do it. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, uh, generative shape design. On the transform, get the join operation and select the sketch. And okay. So now we joined it. Let's go back here. Back to the finite element uh, measure, and I bet we can select it now. There, the whole joint is selected. So, this is not the only time that things like that can happen. Notice that what happens, I said that uh, sometime when you try to apply the boundary condition and load, you're going to have the same issue. And here I showed you, I can even, uh, you know, put section properties on it. That doesn't always happen, but uh, just be aware of the fact you don't join it, you're going to have problems.
uh, we say fine, say fine. Oh, uh, profile is one. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it. So now we're going to go to our uh, uh, structural scenario creation. I'm going to select the finite element model. And uh, uh, procedure, let me, because we're doing a very simple linear problem, let me do static perturbation. And you can do static step two, but all the static perturbation, everything is linear, so that's easier. Uh, so for boundary conditions, uh, so boundary conditions, uh, I'm going to clamp this end and that end. And for load, for uh, for load, I'll apply a force of to that. In what direction is this? In the in that order. I'm I'm putting this load and putting it up there right now to show you that it it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So a uh, thousand pound. So that's going to be a thousand pound. Very good. And now we're going to run it because I don't anticipate any problem, but let's go ahead and do that. Oh, by the way, uh, this uh, slide that I'm showing in most of these things is if you want to see, for example, the, the beam cross section, etc. So what you do, you go to uh, display, display preferences. Notice that you can say, show me the solid section as a cross section, or you can say, just show me the sketch. You can see that, or you can say, show me nothing. And there are all kinds of things that you can do here, which uh, that's the purpose of that slide. Now, let's go ahead and uh, simulate, uh, first of all, do a model check. Very good. Do another one. Another one meaning simulation check. And now we're going to run it. And it will work. So uh, you will see that when I put the point, the load at that juncture, well, of, of course, I had to join it, it will work. And then I'm going to show you what if the point was not there, it was kind of halfway between the, the vertical edge. Let's see what difference does that make. Did run, you can see that. This is extracting results. Good. So let me close that. And there we are. You can animate it. You put the load there, obviously. If you look at the view from the front, let me let me look at the view from the front. I suppose uh let me stop this thing first. Oops. Okay, good. Uh, let me put the view from the front. Front view. So that you can see it better. There. Uh, now, uh, if this is the stress. If you look at the displacement, it's going to look like that. And if you don't want to see the deformed shape, well, obviously you want to see the deformed shape. So but that's fine. So this is what happens. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, the following. Let me go ahead and just completely get rid of this. All right. And let me also go and get rid of my finite element module. Or, or not the finite element module, the, the measure. It's gone. So basically, I've joined here. 
Except that what I would like to do is I like to go and put the uh, uh, the force uh, at the five five inch location. Now there are different ways of doing it. Uh, in in the videos uh, five six seven etc. I'll show you different strategies for that. But right now the easiest way is to go that sketch. Okay, is to go that sketch and actually break this thing into two pieces. So maybe I do it like that. I delete this. Okay, then I do another line. Well, actually, let me let me do two lines. Okay, one from here to here, and another one from here to here. So I have two lines now. Get through this. Two lines now. Let's give them five inches and five inches. So this is five inches. And this is also five inches. So exit. So now I have three lines. Line, line, line. Exit. All right. Uh, material is on it. No problem. Now we're going to go to, uh, to the measure piece. So we go to structure model creation. MTFEM model. Okay, get the beam measure. Notice that it's joined. So when I joined it, it's going to do mesh them, mesh them all at the same time. Okay, when I select this, the, uh, let me try that for a second. Mesh join. Okay. And if you want to see the mesh, by the way, you can do that. You can say, for example, this. Uh, uh, right click display visibility visibility manager. Just show me the don't don't show me the part, but show me the mesh. Okay, let's get in here. Let me update. Okay, oh, right there you can see that. Let me can change the color. True, but uh, I'll just leave it. Here's the mesh. Okay. Now uh, let me uh, say, show me everything. Good. Uh, how about properties? So we go to properties. Uh, properties first create a cross uh, profile, beam profile, circular. 0.5. All right. Uh, I must have typed something else. Point five, probably did comma five. Point five, yeah, good. And now beam section, because I've joined it, whatever we select here, the whole thing is going to get selected. Profile uh, two, profile one is from, was from the previous one. Okay, good, good. Now, uh, all right, so this is all done. Very similar to before. So now we're going to go to gener uh, structural scenario creation. Create your final demo model. And now go and uh, make this thing a, a static perturbation step. Clamp these ends. So we go to boundary condition. Clamp this end and that end. Let's say OK. And then apply a force. Apply a force. Now remember, of a thousand pound, not to this location, which I can do that. But there is a there is a point down here because remember I made it line, line, and joined it. So I apply it to this location. There. And it looks fine because I have my uh, my clamps here. You can see that. Let me change the color of the background so that you can see see it better. Maybe uh, green. Uh, maybe uh, okay. Where is that uh, dark mirror? Just so that you can see better. There are the clamps. There are the clamps. This is the load that it took it. The only problem is when I to try to run it, it's going to come back with an error message. So uh, let's go here uh, under uh, uh, simulate. When I try to do this, model and scenario check. 
there we are. It says, I don't know where you put that thing. Now, remind, I want to remind you, if you're a CATIA user and you do FEA in CATIA, using CATIA's FEA solver, Elfini, this doesn't happen. If you join, you can still put a load here. But here, it says, I can't do it. Now, in videos uh, 5, 6, 7, etc. tutorials in this playlist, I'll show you how to fix this issue. It didn't happen here because there was a break. There was a break in the line. Okay? All right. I'm not going to show you how to fix this thing because that's the content of the the the, the, the four videos, four or five videos coming after this, uh, or tutorials coming after this. All right, so we're, we're done with this. So now we're going to go, this is why I said here, sometimes it's join, sometimes it's uh, because you cannot pick uh, cross-section, or sometimes because it's uh, loads and boundary condition, etc. Fine, so join is critical. We need to do it in this case. Now we're going to repeat the same problem, except that we will not be using uh, uh, sketch. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Don't need it. Get rid of this. All right. So let's go ahead to uh, our generative structure analysis. I'm going to create that geometry for you. So let me go ahead and uh, make a wireframe, uh, three lines. The first line is going to go point and direction. Uh, the point, I'm going to make it zero, zero, zero. Direction is going to be direction Z. The height is going to be five, uh, five, right? Five. Five. Five inches. Okay, do another one, do another one, point and direction, there is the point, in the z direction, five inches, okay, another one, going from here, and the direction, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put coordinates here, so direction one, one, but the length is ten, right? And there. So basically, I have a wireframe. This is not in the sketch. All right. And now we're going to join it. Okay. So let's go to transform. I'm going to join. And you will see that even when I join, uh, we're going to have a prop later on. So uh, structural. Uh, Model creation, MTFEM. Okay, so measure. I mesh the whole thing, make it one inch. So it's going to be five here, five here, and, and there. You can see that. Say so, okay. Good. Uh, let's do a profile for the cross section. Beam profile, circular, one, uh, point 0.5, point 0.5. Now, once again, I want to point out that if you put the load up here, no problem. But when you put the load here, there will be an issue, okay? Uh, so we did this, now beam cross, uh, beam section. Uh, okay, so uh, let's do the join, join, and profile is profile, one okay good and now we're going to go to structural scenario creation select the, the mesh okay and for procedure use uh, uh, uh to make our job easier do static perturbation as i said you can do static step but i'm going to uncheck if i do this i'm going to uncheck the nonlinear geometry effect if there's no non-linearity, it's just static, straightforward, static problem, the kind of thing that you do in your, uh, you know, first finite element course is this. All right. And now we're going to apply the boundary conditions. Clamp this end. And that end. That end. Okay. And if I apply a load here, there won't be a problem. 
okay? And uh, just to convince you, I'm gonna say load force over there, 1000. I can go run it. I'm not gonna even bother checking these things. I'm just gonna simulate. Oh, I forgot to select the cross section. Okay, uh, uh, material, material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go back here. I forgot to do the material. I didn't put material on this thing. So let's go back to the uh, generative uh, shape design under tools. Uh, let's get the material. We have to go up here. Sorry. Uh, under tools, get the material. Uh, I already have one. Remember, I had one. Uh, let me see for a second. Material browser. I had one which was called the uh, join material steel. Right, right there. I'm going to use the same material. So apply. Let me get through this. Apply it to that. Okay. And now we go and uh, run it because now we do have a material. Okay. So we're not going to get that same same message. So, uh, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, do the model check. No problem. And now I'm going to run it. So there won't be a problem if I put the load right there. Now, in the case where I put in sketch, I could not even mesh it or put material or, or put cross section on it. I had to go join it. But uh, here I, uh, you know, I joined it. Uh, and it took it, but uh, you see that uh, uh, you see that it's going to uh, later on, later on, it's going to bomb out when I apply, when I move the load to a different location. Done. This is done. Okay. There we are. That doesn't surprise me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, fine, let me go change the location of this point to that location. From here, I move it there. So let me go to my, uh, my force. There, double click on it. Remove the support. For the support, I select this point. I can do that. It'll take it. But when I try to run it, let me also uh, update everything. Yeah, it says right here, wrong support. You can see that. Now, even if I had not updated it, even if I had tried to run it, it'll come up with that saying, it won't run. It's, it says that there is a problem. You see that? It won't run right there. Wrong support. Okay, so... Uh, you can see what happened. At that location, there was not an issue. But when I moved it here, there is a problem. Okay. When I when I try to update that, see that? We'll come back with that message. Now, in videos, uh, this is three, uh, four, five, six, and seven, I'll show you different strategies of fixing this issue. And that takes care of here the only thing that i should have done uh, perhaps i said that this can also actually over here i can say that uh, uh yeah sometimes even sometimes even a section property Property cannot be specified. Be specified. This is exactly what happened to us the first time with a sketch. With a sketch. Okay. All right. And good luck.